MIDI Tutorial 1 Basic MIDI Introduction This tutorial will cover some of the basics of using the MIDI Communications Protocol. We will see how to receive MIDI information from input devices, send it to other hardware or software, and select the device that will get the sent information. While the prevalence of software-only music systems have reduced the need for MIDI devices, the MIDI protocol is still necessary for working with both hardware and software synthesizers and samplers. MIDI is also becoming more widely used by artists working with physical interfaces, since it provides a compact and easy-to-use communications protocol for receiving sensor information and producing control messages for motors and other controllable devices. The MIDI in and MIDI out objects the tutorial patcher contains a number of small MIDI-specific patches. The leftmost patch changes a number box anytime information is received from a MIDI input device, then sends that information out to another MIDI device. However, you need to select which device will be used for MIDI input and output. A simple way to select a MIDI device is to double-click on the MIDI object you want to assign. Double-clicking on the MIDI in object produces a menu of available MIDI inputs, while double-clicking on the MIDI out object will display a menu of MIDI outputs. In addition to the physical MIDI devices that are connected to your computer, you will also see some virtual MIDI ports, depending on your operating system and how it's configured. One of the most useful virtual ports is the built-in synthesizer output. It allows you to generate sounds from MIDI messages without having to connect a physical synthesizer or sampler. If you select a MIDI input keyboard for the MIDI in object and the built-in synthesizer for output, you have a simple MIDI through application with very little patching. The MIDI in and MIDI out objects expect unformatted raw MIDI messages. If you route the output of the MIDI in object to a print object, you will see that you have a serial stream of numbers that can be difficult to interpret. Max contains a number of objects that give us more control over how we use MIDI data inside our program by selecting the types of MIDI events, notes, continuous controllers, etc. we want to work with. All about notes. The Nodian and Noteout objects The Nodian and Noteout objects are an example of message-specific MIDI objects. They accept the input of a MIDI stream and ignore all message types other than note messages those traditionally caused by playing keys on a MIDI keyboard or pads on a drum trigger. As with the MIDI in and MIDI out objects, we can select the MIDI port by double-clicking on the object. The second patch shows a basic note display. We can select a MIDI port, then view the notes that are received on that port. The Nodian object displays three pieces of information for each incoming note message, the note number, the note velocity and the MIDI channel it was transmitted on. Play a MIDI keyboard or other controller that creates MIDI note messages and see how the note information is displayed by the number boxes. You will notice that there is no on or off display to differentiate keys being played and keys being released rather. A note off message is displayed as a note with a velocity of zero. This is a common MIDI convention and it is used by many Max objects as the preferred way of displaying a note off message. We have also used a number box with the display format attributes set to MIDI. This provides us with an easily read cue as to the pitch of the note that is being played. The next patch is a simple example of the reverse process, generating note messages to be played by a MIDI device. The note out object expects pitch, velocity, and channel numbers to be received in its left, center, and right inlets, respectively. The left inlet is hot, while the others are cold. In this case, we use Max's ability to decode a list of messages as the input to all of the inlets of an object. Thus, the message box labeled 64100 is treated like three separate messages to each inlet. They are channel 0, velocity 100, and note 64. This will send a note on message for pitch 64 at a velocity of 100 to channel 0. The second message box is almost the same, but uses a velocity of zero which will generate a note off message. Double click on the note out object and select a valid MIDI output device. Then click on the first message box. You should hear the device sound the note. It should sustain until you hit the second message box, which will turn it off. This is a basic MIDI note event structure and can be used as the basis for generating MIDI messages that play music. Controllers and port selection, TLIN and CLOUT, and MIDI info. The rightmost patch is a simple version of an application that remaps MIDI controller data 
it changes any modulation will control value into a pan control value. In this case, the TLIN and CLOUD objects are used for receiving and sending MIDI continuous controller messages. These are message-specific MIDI objects dedicated to MIDI controller values which are often sent by MIDI fader boxes and knob rotary controllers, as well as more music-centric interfaces such as keyboard sustain pedals. As with the other objects, you can double-click them to set a MIDI port for use. The incoming values are used to set up the control system. The patch uses the incoming controller number to determine the routing of a graphical gate object. When controller 1 is seen, the equals equals object outputs a 1, which sets the, the switch to allow the controller value to go into the subsequent message box. This value is then assembled into a valid message for clout, which will send the value to the selected MIDI output. This is admittedly the hard way to watch for control 1 messages. If we give an argument of 1 to a twin object, it will only respond to control 1 messages. There is a little extra programming attached to the cloud object. A button is connected to a MIDI info object, which loads a human object with some data when it receives a bang message. This data is fed into the cloud object. What is this about? Sometimes, you don't want the end user of your patch to have to double click the MIDI objects to set a port, or you may want to set the port on many objects simultaneously. The MIDI info object provides a lot of information on your current MIDI setup, which you can use to set the port information on your MIDI objects. In this case, when the MIDI info object receives a bang message in its left inlet, it produces the names of the available MIDI output ports currently defined on your system. This is used to load the Yumino object with your current MIDI setup. When you select an item from the menu, it is sent to the cloud object as an identifier of the port you want to use. This is just one of the uses of the MIDI info object. We will see other uses in upcoming tutorials. If you want to query your computer for information about available MIDI ports and available controllers, review the MIDI info help files and reference pages. Creating a basic MIDI monitor in order to exercise the MIDI message tools, let's create a basic MIDI monitoring application. We can start by creating a version of the MIDI info Yumino combination that will show available MIDI inputs. In order to see the inputs, we need to send a bang message into the right inlet of the MIDI info object. You can do this with a button object, or use a low bang object so the menu will be loaded each time the patch is loaded. In order to track both note and controller information, we can send the output of the Yumino to both a Nodian and Tlin object. This sets up the two objects to receive MIDI information from the same MIDI port. Now, connect number boxes to each of the outlets of the Nodian and Tlin objects. We can probably have a single number box share the channel, messages, since we won't have notes, and controllers being generated at the same time. Finally, changing the note number box to use a display format of MIDI will allow us to easily see the key of the depressed note. While this is a fairly simple MIDI monitor application, it is the sort of application that can help you debug a complex MIDI setup. You can expand this patch by using other MIDI message-specific objects, such as PMIN and BENDIN, to see even more of the received MIDI data stream. Summary The basic contents of an incoming MIDI stream can be retrieved using the MIDI-in object, and a MIDI stream can be sent using the MIDI-out object. However, in most cases, it is easier to deal with individual message types using their message-specific objects. The Nodian Noteout and Tlin Cloud objects provide an easy way to deal with messages without having to decode the raw MIDI input or create raw MIDI output. The MIDI Info object is a powerful tool for examining the current state of your MIDI setup. Using it to load a menu of available MIDI ports can help make your patch easier to use and is also the best way to set a number of objects simultaneously.